Leftist parties charge that a program is underway to discredit and put state officials who reveal details on the central bank bond scam in compromising situations. They point out that the pressure being applied on the Auditor General at present is one such example. On the 19th of August 2016, the Minister of Finance made a written request from the Auditor General to submit a report which answers specific queries on the bond transactions of the Central Bank from 2008 to 2015. In response, the Auditor General stated that he would compile such a report even though it does not fall under his direct purview, taking into consideration the national relevance of the request. Thereby, the Auditor General conducted an investigation and submitted a report in this regard on the 16th of this month. The report states that an in-depth investigation could not be conducted into the bond transactions during this period as the request had only been to answer 10 questions on the bond transactions during the period. The Auditor General further notes in his report that adequate time could not be spent on the investigation due to the impatience and the unethical reminders of the Minister of Finance. However, a debate arose in Parliament with regard to the decision made to present this report after its completion to the Parliament. I have asked for responses to a set of specific questions. If I wanted to tell the entire country, then I wouldn't have asked this from him in writing. He can tell anything to the papers. A letter was sent to the Auditor General on the 12th of February 2004 through the Attorney General titled Accountability and Audit of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Through the letter, the Department advises not to disclose information on such matters to anyone. This has been violated. The Central Bank used this very letter to deny details to the Corp Committee. With all due respect to your position, the financial management of the country as well as the Auditor General's Department was a mess in the past. We should help the officials who are trying to rectify this not oppose it. The Auditor General can easily stay at home with his salary. He does not need to make all these reports. Thank you, thank you very much. I spoke about this issue with the Speaker. He in turn had discussions with the Auditor General. He had said that he is not violating the conditions of this letter when handing over the reports. The Auditor General is not obligated to undertake any request made by ministers or the executive. However, based on the national relevance of this issue, the Auditor General undertook a lengthy investigation into the bond issuances from 2009 to 2015. The report was handed over to the Speaker of Parliament and as requested by the Minister, a copy had been handed over to him. A copy of this report had also been given to the Chairman of COPE. When we present it to Parliament, it becomes a public document. This has been uploaded on our website as well. The Auditor General is the official in charge of checking on the executive. Therefore, he has no obligation to heed to the request of the executive as well as the ministers. Since the reports of the Auditor General are not beneficial to the government, there is a big push to bring in allegations against him. It is politically unethical to bring such allegations against a high-ranking government official such as the Auditor General. What they are attempting to do is to reject the reports of the Auditor General from the beginning, cover up the bond scam and save Mahendran. One of the allegations against the previous administration which we were a part of was that we were corrupt. They created this change to save society from this corrupt administration. Based on the report of the Auditor General, the former Central Bank Governor Arjuna Mahendran, his son-in-law Arjuna Loishas and his company Perpetual Treasuries were identified as the persons responsible for the fraud that was committed. That is why some ministers of this government have taken steps to launch attacks at the Auditor General. There was a serious effort undertaken in the recent past to bury the bond scam. They tried to stop it from being investigated by COPE. Then they tried to put obstacles so that COPE won't be able to carry out its activities properly. These are just some of the actions taken to defend the perpetrators. We call on the powers of the Auditor General to be expanded. That is why the proposed audit bill should be brought in expeditiously. This is the only way in which the fraud and corruption in state institutions can be curbed. This is what the people are asking for.